All righty, as per usual, I'm late. What a surprise. Did anyone think anything different? Hello, everybody. My name is Aiden, and welcome back to another stream. Something else I recently just remembered. Um, I don't have the right scoreboard up, so I better go do that now. But today, it's a Chicago Bulls and Indiana Pacers live game watch along. Um, obviously, the game has just started. It is 3 to 2 right now as the score. But yeah, it's going to be a very interesting game to say the least. We have to win this game, I would say. Just based purely on the fact to try and avoid the 10th seed. We are very, very close to the 10th seed at the moment. I think two games away from falling down there. And as you guys are well aware, the 10th seed at least, I'm not sure about the 9th seed, but the 10th seed has never actually um, gotten past the playing tournament and the playoffs and made it to the playoffs. So the last thing we want to do as a team is to put ourselves in the worst situation to avoid the playoffs. Um, so yeah, that's why it's a must-win game today, even if we don't catch the paces, which we won't, uh, in all honesty. But it's still a big game for that specific reason. So we'll have to wait and see how it goes. But before we get any further, if you enjoyed the stream, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about whether or not the Bulls will win this game and can pick up pick up their performances. We've been lacking a lot recently in specific areas, mainly on the defensive end. Can we actually see that rectified? Um... In this, in this game, you know, maybe we could see the Bulls get back to the basics of defense and what they were doing to win games and stuff of that nature. So we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting game to say the least. Um, Yeah, so yeah, let's get started. We got Jimmy saying, I hope the Bulls could play better defense and offense um, and win this game. I gave you a like on your channel. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Hello, Daniel. Aiden, the true goat. Uh, Bulls, def going to win this one. Tyler says, I got the wrong... Yeah, I changed it just now. Uh, yeah, I, again, because I was late, so I, I streamed before I changed it, uh, instead of changing it, then streamed. But that's okay. It's there now. Bulls up 9-8. to eight. Um, So, yeah, we'll wait and see. We've got Alex Caruso here with the pick and roll. Vooch jump hook. Misses the mark. Rebound for the Pacers. So with the Pacers, you kind of know what to expect. Um, they are definitely a team that likes to spread the floor. They are a very good three-point shooting team. Tyrese Halliburton is one of the best playmakers in the game, and he just made a big shot from three to give the Pacers the lead. So we know what to expect with the Pacers. They're on a good winning streak, I believe, at the moment. Or maybe it's not necessarily a winning streak. I'm not too sure. Um, their actual wins and losses. But from the last time we faced them until now, they have comfortably gotten into the sixth seed. And I don't see them being caught by anybody, in all honesty, with how they're playing at the moment. So, congratulations to the Pacers, I guess. Uh, again, this game is not necessarily so we can catch the Pacers. This game is to avoid the 10th seed in my eyes. I don't see us climbing the table anymore. We have 10 games left remaining, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and to even catch Philly, who is the eighth seed at the moment. We have to win half of those games, and you have to have Philly lose every single one. You see the kind of almost impossibility of that happening. I mean, sure, I guess Philly could go on that 10-game losing streak, but it's not going to happen. You know, there's not very many teams that go on 10-game losing streaks unless you're one of the worst teams in the league, and Philly just isn't one of the worst teams in the league. So... This is literally just to save ourselves at the moment. That's kind of how I view it. And that's why this game is still very important. But uh, if you guys still have faith that we can catch Philly, fair play. Um, you have more faith than I do in terms of this Bulls team. But I just don't see it happening. But we're still going to win it, you know. 11-9, to timeout for the Bulls as well. We still need to win it. Um, prayers up for 50 wins. I don't think we're getting 50 wins. I actually think it's mathematically impossible to get 50 wins now. Uh, with 10 games to go, we have 34 wins, I think. So 34 wins. Um, we literally can't get 50 wins. That's quite sad now that you think about it. But yeah, it is what it is. I guess we have to strive for 40. <laughs> We've got to try to get 40. I don't want to have a worse record than last year. 
In many ways, I do think this season is more of a success, a success story than last year, even if we have a worse record. But the worst record is still the wor a worse record. I don't care where we finish in the standings. If you can't get more than 40 wins this season, um, that's very disappointing in every sense of the word. No matter how much of a success, a success story, wow, I just woke up as you can tell, um, this team truly is. Next year when everybody's healthy, we're going to get target 70 wins. I'd like to think we could, but I again, um, we're going to have to make massive changes if you expect this Bulls team to get 70 wins. I don't think just bringing everybody back healthy is going to get us to that mark. Um, there, there needs to be some serious changes if we want to strive for that. But, you know, I guess anything is possible. Uh, that's very unlikely, though. All right, we've got Io. Dribbling the ball down the courts. Timeout over. DeRosa with the ball in his hands. Fires Io in the corner. Io with the fake. Fires Caruso open for three. And that's a miss. And that will go to the paces as it lands out of bounds. A very awkward shot for Caruso. Halliburton and Io switch. We've got Caruso trying to guard Siakam. Does well enough as the Pacers miss the three. Rebound for Io. And now we've got Pascal trying to guard Io. It looks like Io's been the main vocal point of the Pacers, I guess, defense here. Vucevic, jump hook, air balls. Oh my. Vucevic picks the pocket. Kobe White drives down the lane. Gets blocked by Miles Turner. We've got Siakam driving baseline. And Vucevic commits the foul. Wow. Alright, we've got Toy Cray coming into the game here. There's about seven minutes to go in this first quarter. All right, here we go. Halliburton. Io goes under the screen. Halliburton will drive. Find the corner. Miles Turner is now in the post with DeRozan guarding. DeRozan gets the steal. That's a good good work for DeRozan. Pulls the chair out. Gets that steal. Kobe to Vucevic. The ball finds DeRozan. DeRozan in the post. And DeRozan misses the mid-range. We've missed quite a few amount of shots since that timeout. Pascal with the Euro gets his own miss. And Torrey Craig is forced to foul to prevent a layup from going in. Another offensive rebound for the Pacers. It's been a big problem all season long. And Pascal manages to get his own miss. Uh, no one really there to cover the paint or rebound the ball. It's quite frustrating now that you think about it. But... Pascal Siakam at the line will shoot too. Do you think the Bulls should have their own schools and uh, breeding programs so we can engineer super basketball players who are like nine feet tall? No one's ever done that. It's genius. It's It sounds impossible. <laughs> it sounds impossible. All right, Pascal makes the first. And Pascal makes both. 13 to 9 is the score. The Bulls really need to respond with a score here themselves. We haven't scored in a while. DeRosa being hassled full court. Finally, a whistle's been called. All right. And the Bulls were inbounds. Io drives baseline to Toy Craig. Toy Craig to Kobe White. Kobe White wants to drive. Euros gets to the rim, misses the shot. He gets his own miss. Toy Craig finds Vucevic in the post. Vucevic gets the post hook to go. And the Bulls finally get a score. 
Vucevic with six points in this game already. All right, Halliburton. DeRosa commits the foul. Huh, interesting. Anyway. I was trying to help the Bulls out. Yeah, but stuff like that will probably never happen. Um, maybe we should target Brandon Ingram or Tyrese Maxey next year. It's interesting. I can see Brandon Ingram eventually leaving the Pelicans, but there's no way we're going to get Tyrese Maxey. Um, Philly will not let him go. But, I, I, you know, if we went after Ingram, I wouldn't be opposed to that. But I don't necessarily think Ingram, you know, let's just say, because we'll probably have to lose DeRozan to get Ingram or something along those lines. I don't necessarily think Ingram makes us a championship contender, if you know what I mean. Um, but he'd be a nice piece to the team, to say the least. The Magic had 34 wins last season. Now they're fifth in the East with 42 wins already. Do you think they make some noise in the playoffs? Ah, that's a hard question to ask because ma the Magic have been very surprising. Um, I'll tell you what, if they're fifth, they'll be facing fourth. And I think fourth is the Knicks, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. I think it's the Knicks. Um, you can let me know, but in terms of winning the series, I don't think they would beat the Knicks in a series, but the fact that they are fifth is noise enough, in my opinion, considering how young their roster is, if they could get a consistent line to the playoffs every single season, that's quite impressive for a team of their age, and... I'd be very... Again, if you're a Magic fan at the moment, you'd be very, very happy with the progress their team has made. Definitely. Um, yeah. We got Vucevic in the post. Fade away mid-range. Nat does not fall. Rebound to the paces. The ball's still down by two with four minutes to go. They are Paolo and Franz Wagner. Do the Bulls uh, make a jump similar to the Magic next season with the young guys? It's hard. It's hard. Um, look, I would say Paolo and Franz Wagner has done it at a younger age. And I think their ceiling is a little bit higher than maybe some of the Bulls players that we have at this point in time. I mean, Kobe White's taken a massive jump this season, which is fantastic. And I expect Io to take a massive jump next season, which should be fantastic. Do we make a similar jump in going to fifth? I honestly don't know. I don't think so. I think continuity, we've tried three years of this. Um, so the young guys might be making the difference, sure. I think there's a very big possibility young guys can make a difference. But if you're talking about as a collective team, I still think there's changes that need to be made. I don't think if we stick out with this team that we will get anywhere. Because you also got to realize it's not just France and it's not just Paolo. They've got a lot of young guys on their teams that are making jumps. They've got guys that fit their own timeline. They have a team that can make the playoffs for the next five seasons if they wanted to. Because everybody matches that timeline with the Magic. The Bulls just have a little bit, you know, they have veterans, they have young guys, which I think is a good combination if you're good, but we're not good. So at the moment, you need to kind of pick a lane and then hope that the young guys can maybe make that difference. So no, I don't think we'll make that jump like the Magic did without big changes. That's a long-winded answer, but that's my answer. That's what I think. If this team stays the exact same, Assuming that, you know, Levine is going to leave at some point and, you know, Patrick Williams will return. Lonzo might return coming off the bench. I still don't think we jump to fifth. But anyway, 15 to 11. The Pacers managed to score two extra points since that answer. A whole minute has gone by. Drummond is now in the game. Alex Caruso. Shoots from the corner, and he gets it to go. That's a tough shot for AC, but nothing but net for him. Bulls go down by one. Halliburton finds McConnell. And a, de a defensive three-second call for the Bulls, so the Pacers will shoot some free throws. So 
It's a tough shot. They're showing the replay for AC. Wow. I don't necessarily think that's a defensive three seconds, but anyway. TJ McConnell. Shoots over Drummond and scores again. TJ McConnell has a special hate for the Bulls in his heart. I don't know what it is. He always wants the ball out against us. He makes his first shot, and it was a heavily contested one. Drummond to Io. Io shoots the three, and it connects. Io ties the game for the Bulls. McConnell brings it back up. Miles Turner. Halliburton's going to shoot the two for one. I don't know why. Actually, it's not even a two for one. I don't know why he shot that. Dale and Terry. A little bit too eager with the bounce pass. That was picked off very easily by Halliburton. McConnell finds the corner. Misses the three of the paces. Rebound Drummond. We've got bailed out there. All right, Caruso. Behind the back. Mid-range. Step back. He sends... I don't know who that is. I don't know who that was. He just sent him back to Indiana, though. Caruso makes the, makes the mid-range. Wow. He ankle broke him, ladies and gentlemen. Put him on the highlight reel. Caruso said, you can't touch this. Makes the shot as well. That might be the best highlight for a while that the Bulls have had. An ankle breaker. How often do you see that for the Bulls? Not very often, I'll tell you that much. Crazy stuff. And the Bulls have responded with the, from the Pacers run with a little bit of a run of our own. We're fighting tooth and nail at the moment with the Pacers. Again... I think there's a bit of a sense of urgency here with the Bulls. And they've done some changes from that last game against the Wizards. As they should. Because that was a disaster. But they've brought Vucevic more involved in the game. He's already... I think he's leading the team in points at the moment. But he's also shot more shots in that first quarter than he did in the last game. That is a big difference, of course. Um, defensively, I still don't know yet. There's still a lot defensively that we need to figure out. But... You know, the Pacers are a pretty decent defensive team in their own right. So, yeah. Um, it looks like both teams might be cancelling each other out on, on, on the defensive end here. And this might be a low-scoring game because of it. Is Bulls fandom common in Australia? Look, basketball is very common in Australia. When it comes to Bulls fandom... Not as much as Boston and the Lakers, of course, which I would still think is the same in America. But I would say if you're not a Boston fan or you're not a Lakers fan, you can see a good chunk of Bulls fans in Australia. Yes, I would say it's not common. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's... It's like a balance between common and uncommon. You know, like if I... Let's just say I pop into a Woolworth somewhere, right? Or a, a shopping center. Um, you might see a couple of people wearing some Bulls merch and stuff of that nature. You might see them. You might, you know, you, you, you can tell that they're a Bulls fan or there's a Bulls hat. Uh, and, and that's how you kind of figure out that they're Bulls fans. But I, in terms of the friends that I have, I only have one friend that's a Bulls fan as far as I'm aware. Uh, you know, I have a couple of fan um, friends uh, that are, you know, Clippers fans, Lakers fans, Boston fans. I have a friend that's a, uh, I have two friends that are Memphis fans. So it's a little bit diverse, but yeah, you will, you will see a couple of Bulls fans in Australia. It's not, it's not a rare sight. Or you see people that just really love to wear Bulls merchandise. It's one or the other. All right, TJ McConnell shoots that mid-range, gets blocked by Io, and Io gets the rebound. Io wants to run. He's going to take it back out. DeRozan, mid-range, finds Drummond. Drummond wants to be physical. And it's an offensive foul for Andre Drummond. Wow. 
I respectfully disagree with that call, but let's take a look. There could be something in it. I don't really see it. I don't know about that one. McConnell finds the corner. Pascal... Neesmith misses the three. Rebound to Andre Drummond. Dale and Terry wants to run with it. He's going to take it back out. Drummond's going to enter the paint. Shoot the layup and scores. Drummond said, you're not going to give me the foul that time. He goes up and in. 11-2 to two run for the Bulls. Pascal enters that post. Caruso blocks him from behind, but a foul has been called. That will send Caruso to the line. I'm the only one in people I know here. Um, that's, yeah, look. Uh, it's hard because the basketball is worldwide, but you're going to see more Celtics and Lakers fans worldwide than you're going to see Bulls fans. Um, but I would say Bulls are around the third mark. Like, you know, I think the Lakers is, is probably the most popular team here. I think you're going to see a lot more Lakers fans because that's just a modern thing with LeBron James there at the moment. Um, you know, one of the players that has led the generation for the NBA. So a lot of people are going to be Lakers fans and, of course, Kobe as well. Um, then you might see Boston fans, you know. There's there's a, quite a lot of Boston fans here, but I wouldn't say anywhere near as much as Lakers fans. And then it would be the Bulls. Drummond gets the slam. He's having a great start to this one. Bringing some physicality to Miles Turner. Um, but yeah. I would assume it's the same for most other teams worldwide. The Bulls have a very popular fan base. A very popular... Um, they're a very popular team. They're a worldwide team. But yeah, it wouldn't be more than the Lakers and the Celtics. Miles Turner gets the layup to go. Why Javante Green ain't getting any minutes? I have no idea, Tyler. I really don't know. Um, he might just be there in case somebody else gets injured. He might just be an injury replacement in many ways. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's not ready to play. I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm glad that he's here regardless. But, yeah, I'd love to see him play. I feel like there's no point in signing people on 10-day contracts if they don't play. But maybe this is literally just to see, you know, just for injury stuff. I mean, Patim hasn't played today either. We've only really seen Dale and Terry and Drummond come off of this bench. No Javon Carter either at the moment. With 28 seconds left in the first, you'd expect one of those guys to at least be in the game at the moment. All right, DeRozan makes two. 25 to 21. Bulls up by four. Okay. McConnell wants to drive. Tries to fake. He gets the layup. He actually hates us. I can't believe it. I can't believe that's that's the move he just did, and it falls. DeRozan, fade away. Gets it to go. And that is it for the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. The Bulls actually have a first quarter lead. Can you believe it? When was the last time this happened, ladies and gentlemen? Who knows? But we ended up walking away with the lead, 27 to 23. But the most important thing here is I think we're really fighting. We're really fighting in this game. Um, the Pacers, you know, they're the team that likes to dictate the pace, likes to dictate the style of play. And I think, you know, they've done that well. They want to play fast. They want to really be physical. And the Bulls are matching that at the moment, which is all you can ask for for a game at home against a team that has a better record than you. And has, I, in my eyes at least, a better style of play. So, we're doing well at the moment. We'll see how it ends up turning out between both teams. But yeah, look. Let's just say in a hypothetical situation, the Pacers lose every single game. 
and ends up having the same record as the Bulls. Winning this game then becomes very important for the Bulls because you could tie the season series against them. They've beaten us twice. We've beaten them once. We could have a chance to beat them again. So it's, yeah, it's, it's an important game for that reason as well. But more importantly, just to save our own skin from the 10th seed. The last thing you want to do is have the 10th seed. I'll tell you why I don't want the 10th seed. Let's just say the playing tournament is all that we get. Let's just say even in that ninth seed, we lose to the Atlanta Hawks, who will be the 10th seed, right? Let's just say we lose that game. I'd rather be at home and have playoff atmosphere in Chicago than go to Atlanta and have it there. It's as simple as that. That's the only reason why I want it at home. Because other than that, it doesn't matter, ninth seed or 10th seed. You still versus the same opponent. But I want the game at home. I want the game in, sh in the United Center, in Chicago territory. That's what I want. I want playoff atmosphere in Chicago. I've been very, very clear about that for a while. That's why I want the Bulls to make the playoffs as well. It's not because I think we're going to win a championship or that we can bring a good series to Boston or whoever we face. It's because I want the atmosphere. I want, I want the players to feel accustomed to playoff atmosphere. I want the fans to be accustomed to playoff, playoff atmosphere. You know, I, I want to see that momentum. I want to see the loud arena. I want to see the white shirts in the crowd. That's what I want to see for Chicago. And I think we deserve something like that. So if the playing tournament is all that we get, best do it at home. And that's the only chance that we're going to get is to stay the ninth seed. So there is a lot on the line here. Very much so. We'll have to check when the next game Atlanta play is and if they're going to win that one. Maybe they're playing right now. I have no idea. All right, DeRozan. Mid-range, and it connects. 29 to 23 is the score. Bulls up by six in the second quarter. Javon Carter is now in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Toy Craig is as well. TJ McConnell finds Pascal for three. And it falls. It's a very awkward shot for Pascal, but yeah. Um, it falls for him. Fair play. I'm here for the commentary. Have appreciated this all season long. Go Bulls. Thank you very much. Uh, as long as the Bulls keep playing, I will try to do a watch along for it. All right, DeRozan, sidestep, shoots. Not the right shot for DeRozan. He misses. Rebound to Naismith. Miles Turner turns it over. It's a very poor pass in the end. DeRozan in the post. Fade away mid-range. And they call a late foul as DeRozan will go to the line. DeRozan is on the floor. Naismith is very upset. He's going... I don't know what he's doing. He's going to the Pacers coaching team. He's asking what to do. Looks like he might take his seat on the bench. I'm not sure. DeRozan misses the free throw anyway. Maybe bought a lie type of moment. Can't believe Boston blew that lead. Well, look... That, again, Boston had probably hasn't done that all season. So it goes to show, even with the best of the best teams, blowing a lead like that happens at least once a season. It's happened to the Bulls. It happened to Boston. It sucks that it was against Atlanta because that's a direct opponent to us now. But um, it does happen at least once. So, yeah. All right, we've got TJ McConnell back to Miles Turner. Drummond guarding Miles Turner very well at the moment. McConnell tries to drive baseline, reverses, and gets the layup to go. Again, he hates us, ladies and gentlemen. He absolutely hates us. I don't know what it is. Why does he always sweat against the Bulls? There are games where he literally has zero points, like maybe one or two assists in a game, and then against the Bulls, he doesn't miss a shot. It's insane. He needs to stop that, man. 
Miles Turner open for three, and it falls. It looks like the Pacers have found their shooting motion at the moment. So we're trading buckets at the moment with the Indiana Pacers. Do you think if the if loads of people go to Mars, the native people there might get upset and hostile towards humans? Uh, that's asking for trouble. Uh, look, I'm pretty sure if you try to get people living on Mars, like Elon Musk likes to say, you would have to assume that they would have checked for native people. Um... Uh, I, I'm assuming there would be no one living on Mars. As far as I'm aware, it's not possible to live on Mars. But that's the closest, I guess, place for, I guess, another life form type of thing would be Mars. So I don't know. I guess that goes down to whether or not you believe aliens exist. And if so, do they live on Mars? Who knows? Who knows? But, if there is aliens, there is a possibility of that. TJ McConnell. Drummond gets the steal. And he dribbles it down. Passes it to Cray. Back to Kobe White. Kobe open for three. And it connects. Kobe White with the three. Alright. And that should be a timeout for the Pacers. Again, we get the steal and we get the transition three. Andre Drummond very big in both of those areas. He gets the steal himself, Andre Drummond, in the pick and roll. But his run down the lane, down the middle of the court, gave Kobe White the open three as well. If it wasn't for that run, Kobe wouldn't have the opening that he did. And he makes the three. So Drummond making a heck of a difference in this game at the moment. I'll tell you what. Another argument here. About, um, I'll, uh, another, you know, should Drummond play more than Vucevic? That's, that's the argument I'm having in my mind at the moment. I don't know if Vucevic has had a strong start to the game. But maybe, just maybe, Drummond should be playing a little bit more today than Vucevic. But we all know it's not going to happen, but you'd like to see it. Again, with the impact he's making. But let's hope Vucevic when he comes back on the court, can respond likewise on both ends of the floor. Um, I want to tell all the aliens about Jesus so they have a chance of going to heaven. Well, if there are aliens, feel free, my friends. Go at it. Have fun. That should be very fun. I'm sure you won't be the only one as well. Andre Drummond equals Bulls MVP. That's what I like to see. Uh, he's an underrated player, Andre Drummond. Definitely a guy I'd like to keep if we had the chance. What's the best and worst picks for the Bulls, in my opinion? Are you talking about recent history or just of all time? Because um, there's quite a few flops that have happened for the Bulls uh, in, 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 in both, I guess you could say. But I think the best would have to be MJ. I mean, how could you not? Um, how could you not say MJ? I mean, that's just a basic answer. He's probably one of the greatest basketball players, if not the greatest basketball player to ever play. And he gave us six rings. So I would say Michael Jordan is my is my best. Um, the worst. That's very hard to give. I would say one of the worst ones that we've had in recent history is Denzel Valentine. I don't mean this in a bad way. He plays in the NBL at the moment, but he was hyped up to be a lot of things. And he was a decent offensive player, but could never really get a stint with the Bulls. Was always injured. Um, didn't really produce what we thought we could see. Um... But that's recent history. I'm sure there's a lot worse that we've done. But recent history-wise, I would say it has, has to be Denzel Valentine. Because um, he's out of the league. And stuff of that nature. But there could be a lot more. I don't, I, you know. It is what it is. So that's my opinion, I guess. Everybody is um, trashing on this year's draft. But even in 2013 draft, um, 
I think you said, yeah, I think that's Giannis went 15. I don't expect us to find a Hall of Famer, but a good role player and maybe a future starter uh, is a possibility. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, look, we shouldn't be taking this draft lightly. It might, look, weak draft or not a weak draft. By the way, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I need to put my earphones in. Ladies and gentlemen, Javante Green, for the first time this season. Oh, I didn't get to, If there was an ovation, I didn't get to hear it. But he's in the game, ladies and gentlemen. This should be some fun. Look at him. And Pascal's already trash-talking. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, congratulations to Javante Green. His first minutes for the Bulls this season on that 10-day contract. I'm happy for him, man. But anyway... Like you said, I expect to find someone good. Just because it's a weak, it's weak in terms of star power. It's not weak in terms of role players. It's not weak in terms of guys that could develop into superstars. But it's weak based on coming into the league and being a superstar. There's no Wenbenyama type of player here. There's no Zion or Ja Morant type of player here. At least from the eye test, at least, now. But that doesn't mean you can't develop someone. For example, like a Kobe White type of guy. Kobe White came into the league, you know, as the seventh pick, went around, you know, pretty high up in the lottery, probably wasn't expected to become a superstar, and has turned into one of the Bulls' best players. You can develop, you can find someone to develop in that way. So, Javante Green gets the layup. Oh, boy. Comes in and makes an instant impact. Javante Green, oh, I've missed him. Anyway. Um, yeah, so don't sleep on the draft. We have our own pick. We can't trade it unless obviously we do a sign and trade as soon as we pick up the player. But, um, yeah, don't sleep on this draft. Uh, name three of the best and three of the worst of any generation. Well, I'm going to give you the ones that I like the most, but I don't necessarily think this is the best. So, obviously Michael Jordan has to be one. Um, Derek Rose became an MVP with us. I think that's pretty hard to ignore, and that's a different generation. Um, I actually want to quickly... I want to check something based on the worst. Um... But in terms of the best, that third one could be, it could be anything, you know, it literally, you could pick, uh, I think Scotty Pippen is another one that we can look at at the end of the day as well. So, I would say that, but even something that's a bit of a sleeper pick, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler was pick, uh, was it 30th in, in, the, in the draft? And we developed him into the superstar that he is today. And now he's a superstar, obviously, for a different team. But still a superstar. And we drafted that. And we had a big responsibility in developing him. And we did that as well. So, Jimmy Butler, uh, Scottie Pippen, Derek Rose, Michael Jordan. Those are the guys that you're looking at for the best. For the worst, uh, Javante Green got a block. Man! There's five Javantes out there, man. Why did we get rid of this guy? He gets a block. He's gotten buckets. Oh, I'm crying. Oh, the tears are rolling down my face, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, in terms of the three worst... Well, I still think Denzel Valentine has to be one of them based on recent history. Again, keep in mind, I don't know a lot of... When you think of the worst draft picks that we have had, um, I'm not going to remember them from the early 2000s because I wasn't watching the Bulls back then. So, was Paul Zipser a draft pick for the Bulls? Cameron Bearstow, those two, uh, were, I believe, were either signings or draft picks. I'm assuming one of them would have to be up there in one of the worst. Um, yeah, and Denzel Valentine... I still think the jury's out on Patrick Williams. We don't necessarily know about Patrick Williams yet, so I'm not going to say him at the moment, because uh, I still think there's, there's a decent amount of potential to become a good two-way player there. 
Uh, I think the jury's still out on Dale and Terry as well. We don't know much about him yet. Only two seasons in. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna search it up because if Cameron Bearstow and Paul Zipsa are both draft prospects that we that we picked up, then I'll say those two. <laughs> Paul Zipsa. You guys won't even know who I'm talking about to be honest. Paul Zipsa. Um. Where's draft? Did he get who drafted him? Or maybe we didn't draft him. Um, we did draft Paul Zipsa at pick 48. Cameron Bearstow. Did we draft him as well? He's Australian. Oh no, I picked an Australian. That's crazy. No way I picked an Australian. Yep, we drafted him as well. So I'd say those two. I guess that's my answer for that. Um, what position do we need to draft? It depends on the positions that leave. I personally would like a forward. If I think we need more wing depth. Because, um, I, I, you know, Patrick Williams is staying. But other than that, I don't necessarily think we have a lot of wing depth for our future. You know, Toy Craig is a nice addition, but I, I would like a power forward or a small forward. I think that's my go-to at the moment. If Drummond leaves, I wouldn't mind having a center. Look, I like Vucevic. What is Kobe White doing? Kobe White doing some YMCA moves to get a layup. My man did three spin moves to get an open layup, and he finally gets there. But yeah, um, if Andre Drummond does end up leaving this team, which I think is a possibility, uh, a center for the future would be lovely because... Vucevic, as much as he probably still has a lot left in the tank offensively, he can't play in the league forever. So you have to prepare for the future ahead. And maybe you could get a center that could be an understudy. I wouldn't mind that either. And then maybe I'll be looking at a guard. But I, I, I don't really... I think the guard is the last place we should be looking. So yeah, I would say a forward if Drummond stays. If Drummond leaves, I wouldn't mind having a center... In this team. Um, I bet I could eat 10 pizzas at one time. If you put a gun to my head. I'm sure that's. I'm sure. You know. That would be, be difficult. But I'm sure, I'm sure you could do it. Especially if they're small pizzas. Vucevic gets the rebound. Bulls still have the lead by the way. While Terry. Uh, Terry barely got minutes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, uh, it's hard for me to say Dalen Terry's a flop or he's one of the worst picks. Because, look, in hindsight, let's recent drafts have not been great. Because let's just say, all right, Patrick Williams is not one of the worst picks we've selected. But in terms of who we gave up to get Patrick Williams, we gave up on Tyrese Halliburton. We didn't draft him to get Patrick Williams. That could be considered one of the worst picks we've made. And with Dalen Terry, literally the pick after that was Walker Kessler who I think Bulls fans would love by now if he was here. You know what I mean? And that could be considered a bad draft pick as well, just based on who he passed up on. But if you're talking about players that barely got any run here and that wasn't very good here, uh, I can't pick Dale and Terry and Patrick Williams because they both have roles here. They're both playing meaningful minutes here, whereas... Guys like Cameron Bearstow and Paul Zipsa, who probably guys don't even remember, didn't really get much run in recent history. And I think Denzel Valentine, based on how big of a... Uh, we, we drafted him like 13th, and the fact that he's out of the league right now has to be proven as one of the worst as well. Io shoots and makes the three. Bulls are up by double figures, ladies and gentlemen. Timeout for the Pacers.
But let's take a look at Javante Green's stats right now. There's five Javante Greens out there. He's got two points. He's got a steal and he's got a block, ladies and gentlemen, in three minutes of action. But again, it's his movement. His movement has made the difference for the Bulls. His movement has been the difference. He hasn't necessarily got out here dropping 15 points, but because of the way he moves, other guys get open. And because of the way he moves defensively, again, already today, he's been our best help defender today. Where if Vucevic gets beat, there's Javante Green right there. And other guys as well. So he's made a difference. There's been a lot of players today that have made big differences in the game. Drummond came in, made an instant impact, and Javante Green has done the same. I'm very, very happy with how the Bulls have played thus far. 49 points in the second quarter, up double figures. You've got to enjoy moments like these. You don't get them very often. Unfortunately, I do remember Zipsa and Bearstow. I was going to say Felicio, but I don't... Did we even draft Felicio? But I think, in all honesty, like, no, I know Felicio hate is very common here in Bulls Nation. Felicio is better than Zipsa and Bearstow. Uh, but he's often mean because we gave him a big contract. I don't even know if we drafted him. That's the thing. Um, did we draft him? I don't know if we did. I don't know. Someone can let me know if, Felic if we draft a Felicio. But yeah. Felicio is better than those guys. No disrespect to those guys, of course. Halliburton finds... Naismith for three, missed, rebound to Rosen. The Bulls continue to pile on the pressure. Io finds Javante Green to Caruso to Vucevic, the ball movement. Vucevic is now in the post, back to AC. And things are going to start to slow down. AC ready to cook. Vucevic in the mid-range, and it connects. The Bulls have all the momentum, and if they're not careful the paces, they could go down 20. It looks like there's a, um, a west spot there on the court. Both players managed to slip, but a miss three, a rebound for DeRozan. All right, DeRozan in the post, finds AC. AC fakes, back to DeRozan. DeRozan open for three, and it rattles in for DeRozan. 56 to 39, the Bulls have surged big time. Vucevic, nice help on that pick and roll. A missed three, but an offensive rebound. And Io commits the foul with three minutes to go. Wow. All right, Javante Green tries to get the block. The Pacers end up getting the foul calls going their way. I'm assuming that will mean free throws for the Pacers. Pascal drives to the rim. I don't see much there, man. I know, you know, it's Javante Green hype. Maybe DeRozan fouls. But Green, that's a clean block. I don't care what anybody says. Anyway, Pascal at the line here makes the first. But still, McDermott is the worst because we gave up Harris and Nurkish to get him, who fleeced us. AK, wow. Wow. I didn't know that. I don't remember that. But I wouldn't be surprised. But in terms of McDermott as a player, like, if you think of him as a player right now, I'd still take McDermott on this team as we speak. Because he, he would be a different addition to this Bulls team. Like, he can... 
He could shoot off screens. He could shoot in the catch and shoot. He could shoot moving threes. He may not be a defensive-minded player at all, but in terms of the things that we need in this Bulls team, as Vucevic makes a tough mid-range shot, I would still take McDermott now. Whereas Zipsa and Bearstow, I don't know where they play, but they wouldn't be play- They wouldn't be an NBA player right now. Um, how am I doing? I'm doing all right. Thank you. I hope the Bulls win tonight. Well, we're up by 18. We're on the projection to win. And we're seeing Javante Green minutes right now. So I'm as happy as it can get in terms of a regular season game. Halliburton mid-range. That's off. Rebound Vucevic. All right, AC. Finds Vucevic. Vucevic in that post. Finds Io. Io, pick and roll. Bounce past the Vooch. Vooch to the corner. Javante Green. Oh, Javante Green. Oh, Javante Green. Where have you been all my life? You know what they say, ladies and gentlemen. You know what they say. You never know how much you love someone until you let them go. We let Javante Green go in free agency. He's come back to the Bulls. And I've missed him so much. He's returned. He's home. Javante Green, sign him up right now. He might not be able to play in the playoffs for us. I don't think he can. But sign him up right now. Bring him back to the team. I don't care. I've seen enough. I've seen all I need to see. I'm a short-term Bulls fan and I admit it. I want Javante Green right now. Start free agency tonight and sign him up. <sighs> I feel good. I feel good. Anyway, I'm so happy he's back. Certified Bulls legends. I've missed him, man. Now, all we need to see is Derek Jones Jr. back here. And it's almost like... We've got the whole team reunited. But unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for Derek Jones, Derek Jones has been cooking it in Dallas. He's been unbelievable for the Mavericks. Uh, so I doubt he'd want to come back here. But, you know, it is what it is. With the score as it is, I hope we don't see a clutch game tonight. I'd be terrified if we see a clutch game tonight. But, again, we're still the Bulls. Don't sleep on the Pacers. They're a good team. I know we have... The edge at the moment, which, you know, great for us. It's been fun to watch. We're up by 22. But that is a still a manageable comeback with a half a basketball to go. So, put it this way. We've seen worse with this Bulls team if we give up this lead. But, hopefully we don't. Anyway, the Pacers are in the penalty. So, for the next 1 minute and 27 seconds, any foul that we commit, the Pacers we have to line for. And he misses the first. Alright. And he makes the second. Okay, it's a 21 point game here. Plus 16 since Javante Green entered the game. The dirty work, ladies and gentlemen. He does it well. Caruso to DeRozan. DeRozan finds Kobe White. Kobe fakes, drives Vucevic to AC. The ball movement. Back to Vuce. Open jump hook connects. Oh boy. Since when did the Bulls have off ball movement? Vucevic cutting down the lane like his life depended on it. Gets the layup. Nemhard fade away. Connects. All right, DeRozan with 43 seconds left. We might be looking to slow things down. DeRozan enters that pick and roll behind the back pass to Vooch. Back to Kobe. Kobe with a behind the back dribble and another. He shoots. Oh, that would have been fun if that went in. But Kobe White misses the three. Pascal tries to drive. AC stops him. Enters that post. And it looks like the pace, it will be Pacers ball. Is that Precious Achua? 
I haven't seen him all game. I thought he'd be playing a little bit more. Or maybe that is Preston. No, no, it's not. Who is that? Why does it look like Preston Suchua? That can't be right. I'm going to have to... I don't know. I don't know who that is. Anyway, it's going to be Bulls Ball. Whatever happened, that's Bulls Ball. I, I thought it was Preston Suchua, but I'm pretty sure he plays for the Knicks, doesn't he? Anyway, I don't know. Whoever that is, it's still Bulls Ball. 14 seconds left. All right, we've got DeRozan. Eight seconds left. Seven, six. AC won't set the screen. DeRozan. I don't know how they didn't call a foul there. DeRozan is furious. He runs to the bench. He runs to the locker, the locker room. He literally got the guy to bite on the pump fake. The refs did not call it. Wow. Anyway, regardless of the fact, Bulls are up big in this game at the moment. 64 to 43 is the score. And Javante Green has been a difference maker in the game, ladies and gentlemen. What a start to the game against the Pacers. We know why this is a must win. We need to avoid the 10th seed in the playing tournament. This is the first step towards doing such things. You can't ask for much more in a quarter and a, and a half, scoring 60 points in the half, but keeping the paces down to 43 points. That's the difference right now. It's not that we've scored 64 or whatever it is. That's, you know, fantastic. Of course, that's great. But we've held the paces to 43 points in two quarters. That is the biggest part of this game that we should be very happy with. Uh, and I'm just going to keep track here. The Atlanta Hawks are playing the Trailblazers at the moment, if you guys want to know. And they are winning by uh, 12. So, And that's in the third quarter, I think. Or fourth quarter, I'm not sure. It, doesn't necessarily, it just says live. I don't know what quarter that's in. So, yeah. At the end of the day, a very, very, very big chance Atlanta wins that game. So the Bulls could stay a little bit ahead of them. Which is nice. And if you guys are wondering about the 76ers, just in case you guys still feel like we can catch them, uh, the Clippers and Philly are in a close game, but Philly have the lead 61-57. to So if they win that game, again, that could be another big blow for the Bulls to catch them. But we're not going to catch them. But either way, if we did catch them... Um, yeah, that is that is what it is. We're not going to catch them, but still. Or it's, it's a mathematical possibility, I guess. Tell us about the baddies at your high school, Aiden. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about the baddies in my high school. Uh, I went to a Christian school, and I will not talk badly about any of the girls there. No, thank you. Uh, salty solution. I don't know what emoji that is. Uh, thanks for beating the Pacers, Aiden, since the Heat can win, uh, can't win games. No worries. Well, hey, it's not over yet. We can't jinx us before it's uh, it's happened. <laughs> yeah, don't celebrate just yet. But we're on path. We're on the trajectory. The thing about the Pacers that makes me still worried that they can come back, they are one of the best offensive teams in the league. A click of a finger, things can start turning on for them. You know what I mean? They could switch things up a bit. And, you know, that could cause us some issues. But I must admit, I don't know if it's the, the, the Javante Green effect or the Bulls have finally decided to wake up. But this has been a completely different style of play. I, again, the highlight here. Picture this situation, right? All season, the Bulls do not move without the ball. You see DeRozan or Kobe dribbling the ball, and everybody else is just spacing the floor. Vucevic is the only one setting the screen. No one moves. We're just waiting for the shot from the three-point line, or we drive with the ball, not without the ball. Then all of a sudden, what is it, 65-ish games, 70 games, however many games, if about eight, about 70 games now that we've played, 70, 73, whatever it is. The 73rd game of the season, we saw Vucevic dive cut without the ball. Crazy stuff. I never thought I'd see the day. It has to be the Javante Green effect. But look, 
whatever effect it may be, you better keep that up. Like we bet we best keep that up. But yeah. Anyway, I am uh I'm going to go and get a drink real quick. Again, I feel energized at the moment. Even though I just woke up about an hour ago, this Bulls team has woken me up completely, but I still need a drink, so I'm gonna go get one. I'll be right back. We can talk halftime stats, we can talk in the chat, whatever whatever happens, happens. Uh, but yeah, see you guys in a bit. I have returned, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what you guys have been saying. I hope I can get my high school diploma one day, Aiden. Go for it, man. Go for it. Bulls going to win tonight? I hope so. I'm going to use my uh, psychic powers to predict the Bulls' final score of the game. I see a score of 114 to 97 for the Bulls' win. Well, can't say you're wrong just yet. We'll wait and see. I do want to take a look at what's happening around the league outside of the Hawks game and the Clippers game. Let's see what else has been happening. We've got the Warriors beating the Magic in a tight game. I'm assuming that's in the fourth quarter at the moment. The Hornets and the Clippers are in a two-point game, 113 to 111. Well, the Hornets and the Cavs, sorry. Uh, the Hornets are, have the lead, so that could be interesting. The Wizards and the Nets are in a tied game at the moment. The Wizards are on a three-game winning streak as we speak. Hey, they could go ahead and make it four. The Knicks are beating the Raptors comfortably. Uh, the Clippers and the 76ers are in a one-game fight in the third quarter. The Hawks are beating the Trailblazers comfortably. Uh, the Pistons and the Timberwolves are in a close game, 47-45 at halftime. The Lakers and Memphis are in a close game. Lakers up by 8, 69 to 61 at halftime. It'd be such a Lakers thing to do to lose to the Grizzlies. So I, I can't, nah, there's no way that happens. Um, 64 to 43, Bulls are beating the Pacers. And then Rockets and Thunder in a close game, a one point game. The Spurs and the Jazz have yet to play. The Suns and the Nuggets have yet to play. So. Interesting games all the way around, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting games, to say the least. I think our next game after this is the Brooklyn Nets. And equally as such, 
Brooklyn is a tough game as well. And Brooklyn is a must-win game as well. Now, I don't think Brooklyn are going to make the playing tournament. Um, I don't even think they want to make the playing tournament at this point. But, again, to avoid that 10th seed, when you have a team that you need to beat, a team that's put in front of you that you, you just have to win... Brooklyn would be one of those teams. You know, I can accept losing to teams like the Timberwolves because they're miles ahead in terms of the standings and they have something to play for. I can understand losing to teams like the Knicks and stuff of that nature. But Brooklyn, teams like the Wizards that we lost to, there's no real valid excuse to lose to those types of teams except that we just suck or we sucked on the night, whatever it is. So, yeah, that's going to be a game that we have to win. Now that we've got that out of the way... Let's take a look at the stats for the Bulls today. Um, again, there's a lot of guys contributing a lot of great things here. So let's get started. We've got DeMar DeRozan. He has 10 points and 3 rebounds with 1 steal. 3 from 7 from the field. Um, not too bad for DeRozan. A little bit inefficient, but nothing that he can't change in the next half. AC, big game for Alex Crusoe here. A potential triple-double alert at this point. He's got 7 points. Four rebounds, six assists, and one steal. Three from six in the field has made a very big difference offensively and defensively today. Vucevic, a much better game right here, right now, with 15 points and nine rebounds, two assists on the night as well. He's also seven from 11 from the field, so highly efficient today also. Io has shipped in with 11 points. He's four from five from the field. He's also got a, two rebounds, an assist, and a block. Kobe White, not so efficient today. Hasn't really been efficient for a while. He's got 7 points, 2 rebounds, 1 assist and 1 steal. He's also 3 from 11 from the field. 1 from 3 from the 3-point three line. Again, not too efficient from Kobe White. So hopefully we can see that change in the second half. Off the bench, we've got contributions from Andre Drummond. 6 points and 3 rebounds, 3 assists and 2 steals. We've got Toy Craig, who's knocked down a three for the Bulls. And we've also got Javante Green. How many of them are there? Five, ladies and gentlemen, because he's got five points on the night. One rebound, one assist, one block in there as well. Two from two from the field. Good contributions from a lot of guys. Our starters contributing well, and our bench is not doing too badly as well. I think, actually, are we actually are we winning a bench um, production thing? So Toy Craig has three. Drummond has six, so that's nine points. Five, 14 points off the bench for the Bulls. Um, and the Pacers have 10. We are actually winning bench production at the moment in terms of points, which is a rare sight, to say the least. We don't have the deepest of benches, and we never really win the, win, win the bench tally. So far, we are winning it. I'll take it. I'll take it indeed. So, what I'd like to see in the next half is more of the same. I can't complain. What I've seen in that quarter, in that half, was fantastic. Shots were falling. Defense was being played. The movement was incredible. And I especially want to see, I want to see more off-ball movement. If it's the Javante Green effect, let it be the Javante Green effect. But I absolutely want to see the off-ball movement that I saw in that half continue. It makes things so much harder for the teams like the Pacers to guard. The Pacers are one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference defensively. Since they got Pascal Siakam, I think their team defense is ranked ninth in the entire league. That's really, really good. I think ours is still better, but it's still good, regardless. Anyway, regardless of that fact... What makes it so hard to guard is that you don't know who's going to be the one cutting. It makes communication so vital to the defensive ends, and you can't guard at every possession. And so far, it's worked out. You know, I've never seen guys dive cut so much in my life in this Bulls team compared to what I saw in that half. So we need to see more of the same, ladies and gentlemen, most definitely. Um, the Suns have the hardest schedule remaining. Imagine the eliminated uh, in play-in and they are true trash for the next 10 years. The Suns. Uh, interesting. I, I think the Suns um, team hasn't worked out as much as it should have. I mean, you look on paper, that team should be dominating. 
uh, you know, Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Yusuf Nurkic. There's so many good guys there that you just expect to flourish and dominate. Uh, but the problem is their defense. I mean, as much as we want to not admit it, Bradley Beal ain't a defender. Devin Booker gets better at it every season, but he's not a natural defender. KD's not a natural defender. Nurkic isn't a defender from the center position. They don't necessarily have a true point guard to bring things together. The problems that we thought would consist with the Suns have consisted with the Suns at this point in time. So you look you look on paper, that team is expected to win a championship. But they seem to be very far away from it at the moment. But the playoffs are a different story. In the playoffs, they have players, because the playoff is a different game. It's not the same as the regular season. It's very half-court orientated. They're 42 and 30 at the moment. Um, so they're not, you know, they're not terrible, to say the least. But I think they have players that will work well with the playoffs. I really believe that. But it still comes down to, can they defend well? Is their coaching going to be right? Can they get people involved? Or is it just going to be an isolation show every possession for the Pacers every time down? Anyway, the third quarter has started. Kobe White misses a layup awkwardly. And it looks like there's already going to be a foul called for the Pacers. The play-in in the West is wild. Well, I like about the West. I think the West is the most unpredictable thing I've ever seen. Like, I genuinely don't know who comes out of the West. And I feel that way every year. Maybe it's because I watch so many Eastern Conference games because the Bulls are in the East that I just know the East a little bit more than the West. But look at the West right now. Their ninth and 10th seeds both have positive records. The Warriors have a positive record as a 10th seed. The Lakers have a positive record as a 9th seed. You look at where the East is, our ninth and 10th seeds are not even close to 500. <laughs> So yeah, they've got a lot of good teams out there in the West. You've got to admit it. I can't wait to see the playing tournament for the West. Suns, a 75-win team once they gel as a team to develop their team chemistry. You can't get 75 wins if you don't play defense, though. And I think that you have to play defense to win 70, um, 75 games. The Warriors, everyone claims that, you know, that they were massively strong offensively. And they were. The Warriors were definitely the best offensive team at the time where they got their 73-9 and nine or whatever it was. But no one talks about the Warriors' defense and how big of a difference that was. Like, the Warriors were still a top defensive team in the league. So you have to do it on both ends. I just don't think the Suns have done it to the extent... That um the pay that I said the Pacers no not the Pacers that the Warriors did it or any other championship team really did it they have to be a top defensive team I mean maybe the stats maybe I'm wrong um someone can show me the stats maybe the Suns are a good defensive team and I just don't know much about them compared to what I should but I definitely don't think I they need a true point guard you know imagine if they had a Ricky Rubio type of point guard on their team to set everybody up. That would be a difference maker. They should be going after um, a Tyus Jones type player if they could. That would be a huge addition to the Suns. Instead of having like Bradley Beal or Devin Booker play that point guard spot, get a natural point guard. It'd be nice. Anyway, um, Denver is the favorite to win the, t uh, the championship. Of course they are because they're the champs. But um, I, I look, I, I say this, my prediction has stayed the same. I think uh, from the very beginning of the season until now, I think Boston get out of the East. Judging by how things are going this season, they'll probably do it comfortably. I think Denver get out of the West, but I think Boston will beat them in, in, a, in a seven game series. That's what I think will happen. I think Boston will finally get their ring. But we'll wait and see. The playoffs, if anything, are full of surprises. The Suns are a glass cannon. Yeah, there. As well, you, you got to remember. Yeah, you're right. Injuries uh, made of glass type of... Yeah, I understand that as well. I mean, they've dealt with injuries from the very beginning. you got to give the Suns time. 
as well. As much as we're hating on the Suns at the moment, that team just started this season. It's it's impossible. Not impossible, but it's very hard to ask a team that has just joined together to win a championship. Um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Devin Booker and KD have played together the season before, but getting Bradley Beal, getting Yusuf Nurkic, and getting a new coach, that team has just constructed, really, this season. So you have to give them more than just the season to win a championship. It's just not going to click into gear. I mean, look at the Timberwolves. Uh, they traded for Rudy Gobert. People were... Even until now, people talk about those trades and how it if it was worth it or not. And my answer will stay the same on that. I, it won't be worth it unless the Timberwolves win a championship. They have to win a championship. Otherwise, all those trades they did to get Rudy Gobert, in my opinion, is a wasted wasted trade. And it always will be until they win the ring. Because they haven't won a ring yet. So they need to win one to make it worth it. But anyway, last season, they were a playing team. They got out of the playing tournament. And they fought well with the Denver Nuggets, but they lost. Simple as that. Eliminated in the first round. This season, they're the first seed. Or at least they're in the top two. I mean, how does that happen? They got time to figure things out. And they did. So give the Suns time. That's the next thing I will say. This season might not be the season for them. But maybe next season will be. Who knows? If Boston win, then getting Drew Holiday is the move of the year. They, tr bro, it's the move of the year anyway. Win or lose. They, the, what, what they give up for Drew Holiday? I mean, Drew Holiday's an all-star level guy. One of the best defenders in the league. I mean, trust me, I have Boston Celtics friends. They love Drew Holiday. They always hated Drew Holiday on the Bucks because he was always that guy that no one talks about but makes the biggest difference on their team. And, you know, you know, you might like him as a guy, but you hate playing against him, if you know what I mean. And now that they have him, they love Drew Holiday. I love Drew Holiday, man. I wish Drew Holiday was a bull. Kobe White, Euro steps into the rim, misses, gets swatted to the floor there. That's crazy. Pascal Siakam wants to run. Bulls are only up by 14. The Pacers going on a run. The Bulls should hopefully score to try and stop that bleeding a little bit. We were up by 20. Now we're only up by 14. Uh, Kobe White for three. Off. Caruso gets the long rebound. The ball lands in DeRozan's hands. Nine minutes to go in the third. DeRozan, excellent bounce pass to Caruso. And Caruso makes the three. That might be one of the most underrated passes you'll see from DeRozan all season. He manages to get that ball to Caruso in the most narrowest of margins. And Caruso knocks it down. All right, here we go. Halliburton now with Vucevic guarding. Not the right matchup here. I hate seeing it. Halliburton wants to cross over Vucevic. Vucevic does well enough. Miles Turner misses the three. And Kobe secures the rebound. You got to give all the respect in the world to Vucevic there for keeping up with one of the best guards in the league. Caruso to Io. Back to Caruso. Vucevic. Back to Kobe. DeRozan is in the post. DeRozan will just chuck it up. And that is off. Rebound to Pascal Siakam. Pascal wants to drive. Vucevic gets the block. Good help defense by Nikola Vucevic. Caruso finds Io. Io travels. All right, back up by 17. Bulls got this. I hope we win. I hope so, my friend. I hope so. Bulls only had four turnovers today. Pascal tries to get the foul call, and he does. A very late whistle from the refs there. Io commits the foul. Will that send Pascal to the line? And yes, it will. Pascal will go to the line. I honestly think that is not in the shooting motion. 
but I guess the refs see it differently. Pascal makes the first. And Pascal makes the second. A 15-point game, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Io to Vucevic. Vucevic open for three. He shoots, he misses. Rebound for the Pacers. Pascal wants to drive again. Naismith to Miles Turner. Miles Turner gets to the rim. Good defense by Io. Vucevic tips it to Caruso. Caruso finds Vucevic in the post. Vucevic spins, shoots, and Pascal. Too much to handle. And commits the foul. Vucevic will go to the line for two free throws. Pascal could not guard him in the post. All right. Vucevic makes the first. Vucevic makes the second. Right now, the commentators are talking about people from the Chicago Bears um, in the arena tonight. So if you're a Bears fan, hopefully you guys know what they're talking about because I've got no clue. Pascal to Miles Turner to Halliburton. Halliburton finds Miles Turner again for the slam. Vucevic gets out of the way. He did not want to be part of that poster. 69 to 54. Still up by 15. Io turns it over. Nemhard gets blocked by Io, but he's going to get his own miss in the layup. You got to respect Io there. He turns it over and he tries to make up for it. It's a shame he got his own miss, though. Vucevic. To Kobe White. Kobe White open. Shoots the three. Misses again. Kobe White's been highly inefficient. Caruso's going to get the offensive rebound. DeRozan in the post. Crossover. Tries to get that rip through foul. Doesn't work. Kobe goes baseline. Misses the layup again. Halliburton goes down the lane. Misses the three. Uh, offensive rebound for the Pacers. Miles Turner. No one guards Halliburton. Open for three. We get bailed out there, ladies and gentlemen. The Bulls are slacking on the defensive end, as far as I'm aware right now. You cannot leave Halliburton open for three. DeRozan. Bounce pass. Io with the excellent pump fake. Finds Caruso. Vucevic. Back to DeRozan. No one wants to shoot right now. Pascal guarding. Three seconds left. DeRozan. And Pascal commits the foul. DeRozan is on the floor. Hi, yi yi A very, very, very chaotic couple of possessions there between both teams. Alright. I'm a Bears fan too. Where's the... T.O. question mark. I'm assuming they mean the turnover. I don't know. I, I don't know nothing about the Bears. I just know that there's Bears. Uh, the Bears GM is in the arena. That's all I know. DeRosa gets the layup to go. And DeRosa gets teed up. So DeRozan... He goes for the rip-through. He feels like he should have got the foul. He hits... Um, what is it called? The thing that holds up the basket. He hits it, right? The ref's technical foul him. I don't understand why that's a technical foul. Are you telling me the players can't get frustrated at all? That frustration was not targeted towards the refs. He didn't look at the ref. He didn't talk to the ref. He said nothing to the ref. 
He didn't look at another player. He didn't talk to another player. Nothing. He just... You're telling me he can't hit that little barricade that holds the net up? Come on, man. Oh, these refs are soft, bro. They see one element of frustration and they just... Just technical foul him. It's, it's, that's not right. That's not a technical foul. Halliburton shoots the three. And it connects. 60 to 71. It's 11 points, ladies and gentlemen. The Pacers are doing their absolute best to make that comeback. All right, we've got DeRozan. Fade away. Shoots. Misses. Rebound, Miles Turner. The Pacers want to run. Naismith back to Halliburton. Vucevic gets beaten down the lane. Halliburton gets the layup to go. It's single digits, ladies and gentlemen. The Pacers are making their comeback. Timeout, Chicago. This is what we've been talking about, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot be too quick to judge this Bulls team. You can't just say we've got the win. The Pacers are too good offensively to give up on a game like this. It's rigged. The Bulls should be up by 30 now, not 20... Um, wait, 30 now or 25, I think you said. Well, now it's single digits. The Bulls are only up by 9. Still a long way to go in the game as well. It's not like it's, it's barely about to finish. We got 5 minutes in the third quarter still left to go and an entire fourth quarter. Still a long way. While we're at it, again, let's just quickly take a look at what's happening around the league between the Hawks and the Clippers and, uh, and the 76ers game. Let's take a look. So, uh, we've got the 76ers are still beating the Clippers. 76ers are up by six with seven minutes to go in the fourth. And the Hawks are beating the Trailblazers by 16. So, you're assuming... That the Sixers and the Hawks are going to win their game. So if we lose to the Pacers... ay ay ay. Makes it even worse, doesn't it? If we lose to the Pacers and the Hawks beat the Trailblazers... We literally are only one game apart from each other now. That's not a comfortable lead or a comfortable secure blanket at all. So the Bulls really need to pick things up and go on a run and make this game more comfortable. This is stupid. DeRozan got a technical foul um, for no reason, and it's a nine-point lead. Well, look, I personally think that that was not a technical foul. I don't think hitting the the, the barricade or the that little thing that holds up the 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 basket, the net, the ring, whatever it is. I don't think hitting that is a technical foul. Literally, it, that he didn't say anything to the refs. He said nothing to any other player. He just hit the thing and went down the other end. That is not a technical foul. Anyway, timeout done. We'll see if the Bulls can respond here. Hey... Bright idea. Maybe it's time to bring Javante Green back into the game. Kobe White drives, finds Tory Craig in the corner for three. He airballs, rebound to Halliburton. We've gone really quiet this quarter. Naismith back to Halliburton. Miles Turner misses the three. Rebound to Io. Dale and Terry wants to run. Finds Vucevic. Io open for three. Shoots. Misses. Rebound to TJ McConnell. TJ McConnell gets downhill and Dale and Terry fouls. Again, by hook or by crook, they are slowly coming back into this game. Dale and Terry looking to see if there was a foul. Most definitely there was. Jumps way too early, Dale and Terry. 
And McConnell's at the line. And he makes the first. Again, why is Javante Green not in the game? He was literally plus 16, I, I think, at one point in this game when he entered. Toy Craig is trash-talking him a little bit, trying to get him off, uh, miss, missing a free throw. And he makes both. All right. Big couple of possessions here. Vucevic enters the post with Smith guarding. Jump hook. Misses. Rebound Pascal. We have gone really cold. Pascal. Dale and Terry trying to guard. He does well enough. Rebound Kobe. Drummond's about to enter. Vucevic. Great pass to Toy Craig. Toy Craig misses the layup. Vucevic with the rebounds. They're going to call it a loose ball foul. And that should be on the paces. Wow. Vucevic fought hard for that, fought hard for that rebound. Kobe White comes out of the game. So does Vucevic. Drummond is in and DeRozan is in. Io, mid-range, shoots, scores. We needed that one, man. It feels like we haven't scored in ages. McConnell to Halliburton. Back to McConnell. McConnell almost loses the dribble. Ball finds Halliburton again. Halliburton. Dale Terry bites on the pump fake. Halliburton tries to get the bounce pass, but the layup is missed. Io wants to run. Fires Toy Craig. DeRozan. DeRozan won't shoot. He's going to slow it down. All right. And there's a foul on Halliburton there. DeRozan will go to the line. A bonus situation for the Bulls. So the next fouls that happen within three minutes of action for the Bulls left in the quarter will send the Bulls players to the line. DeRozan with a nice spin move and Halliburton just takes the bait and commits the foul. And DeRozan makes the first. Just trying to stem the tide a little bit. We're back up to double figures here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we go. Come on, make this second one, DeRozan. Makes the second. Good stuff from DeMar. Halliburton. That's not Halliburton, sorry. That's McConnell. Uh, McConnell misses the layup. Bulls get the rebound. DeRosa drives all the way. And he gets the layup to go. Over Obi Toppin. That's a rare sight. Obi Toppin massively athletic. DeRosa just shoots over him. Jalen Smith gets the layup to go, and it's back to 11. Dale and Terry. Drummond with the putback, and it goes. Dale and Terry with a wild layup attempt, missed badly. But Drummond is there to pick up the pieces. Halliburton back to Smith. Smith wants the Euro. Toy Craig's in his way. Toppin fakes, drives, finds Smith again. Smith open for three. And he gets it to go. A decent catch and shoot player, Jalen Smith. And we left him open. Good play by the Pacers, though, to capitalize. Drummond in the post. Finds Io. Io out at the three point line. Gets into that pick and roll. Wants to shoot that layup, and he does. High IQ play from Io Dasumu. Takes the shot blocker out of the equation. Gets an easy layup to go. 15 points for Io today, and he's 6 from 8 while doing it. Halliburton waits for Dale and Terry, looking for a pick and roll. Obi Toppin fakes, spins, shoots, 
and gets the and one. Dale and Terry trying all he can to defend Opie Top and Nair, but he gets bullied out of the way. Again, there's a massive size differential between Opie Toppin and Dale and Terry, and you saw it firsthand there. Just gets whatever he wants at the rim. And the score. So it's back to 10 points, ladies and gentlemen. Obi Toppin with a minute to go, a minute 16 to go to be exact, has a chance to bring it to single digits. He shoots, and he scores. Okay, 72 to 81. Caruso bringing the ball up. Finds Drummond. Drummond with two people on him. It doesn't matter, because he gets the and one. Drummond showing the physicality is still a very important part of being a center. Two people on him, it doesn't matter. They reach and they hack. But Drummond gets it to go and he waves to the crowd as well. Puts his hands up in the air. And he makes the free throw to go alongside of it. Drummond, instant impact as soon as he steps on the court. Alright, McConnell. A moving screen from Jalen Smith. It will go back to the Bulls. 56 seconds left in the quarter. That's a big swing if we could get a bucket here to go. Caruso will inbound to Terry. Terry bringing the ball up here. A big play for the Bulls. This could really shift momentum if we can score. Toy Cray trying to size up Toppin. DeMar trying to enter the post, and the post entry is denied. Dale and Terry enters the pick and roll. DeRosa will shoot the three. Drummond with the offensive rebound. He's going to go back up. Oh, he almost. He almost gets another and one to go. The ball just falls out. Again, another instant impact moment for Andre Drummond. Gets another rebound. He's on the verge of a double-double, by the way. He's got a, I think he's got 11 points. And now I think he's got eight rebounds. Two more rebounds away to getting another double-double. He misses the free throw, though. Just make one. Just make one, Drummond. I know you can. And Drummond gets the second. Up by 13. The Pacers want to take a fast. TJ McConnell gets the layup. That was really, really fast play for the Pacers. As soon as we make the free throw, they just run down the other end of the floor and gets a layup. Toy Craig saves the possession, shoots and scores. Dale and Terry almost turns it over, but Toy Craig saves it and scores himself. A poor pass there. I don't know who that was from. Opie Toppin it was. McDermott's in the game, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think I've seen him for ages. So that will go back to the Bulls. Still up by 13 here. All right, here we go. Caruso is going to inbound. The pace is one of full court pressure this. We can't beat that press. Two seconds left. Caruso shoots. And that is off. Ladies and gentlemen, the third quarter comes to an end. The Bulls have the lead. And the score, as on screen, 87 to 74. A big fourth quarter coming. The Bulls have all the advantage at the moment. But as we've seen, the Pacers will not and choose not to go away. Will that make a difference? Will they come back in the game? Will this be another clutch game? 
Time will tell, ladies and gentlemen, but we are on the verge of a victory if we could just keep our composure and continue to score. It should be an interesting run down the stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hope that we could get things going. What do you guys think about the next upcoming quarter for the Bulls? Do you think we can get this win or will the Pacers come back? Feel free to let me know in the comments. We also have about... There's three likes away from the double-digit like goals, and apparently there's 16 people watching. That's quite a few of you guys, so thank you very much for that. If you haven't done so already, feel free to like the stream. And if you are new, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. But liking the stream allows this to be shared to more people. More people could be invested and want to watch the watch-along again, especially... When the games are very, very close and competitive, I think a lot of people want to see how it ends and will go to a watch along to do it. So yeah, liking the stream allows that to be more, can help be spread more. And that's all there is to it really. So yeah, if you guys haven't already, it takes a couple seconds. We're about to enter the fourth quarter and it's going to be a big one at that. So thank you very much, all of you guys that have liked it already. Okay. Let's see. Right now, it looks like the, you know, you know the fourth quarter hype and all that, you know? That's what's happening at the moment, but we've got a very big fourth quarter ahead. I think the most important thing here, composure. Fourth quarter is... In many ways, it's 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 a mental test as much as it is the physical test. Because we've had a lot of clutch games in the past, so we know how to deal with fourth quarters a little bit more than maybe other teams would, uh, unfortunately. But with a big lead like this, it's important to have composure and to not fall away. We should not be going and giving the Pacers a 10-0 run in this quarter. We need composure. You know, get to the line if we need to, but get easy shots, you know, at least for the first couple of minutes in the fourth. Javante Green is in the game, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully we can see some energy in to begin the fourth quarter. And he makes an instant impact as he grabs a rebound. Caruso to Green. Green's going to drive. Oh, and he turns it over. Obi Toppin. Tries, tries to get to Shepard, to Neymar, TJ McConnell, open for three, misses. Pace is trying to fight for the offensive rebound, Kobe's going to be the one that secures it. DeRozan, DeRozan needs to find the open man, instead he's going to shoot it himself! And that's an and one for DeRozan. Look, I doubted that possession right there, it was four on five, Kobe was open, he should have found the open man. DeRozan said, nope. This is my time to shine. Fourth quarter is where I shine best. And he gets the and one. All right. And DeRozan. Makes the free throw. I bet the most important and famous person in Australia is that Crocodile Dundee dude. Uh, I think Steve Irwin is probably one of the, more, one of the most popular Australians in the world. Uh, him and his family would be very, very, very famous worldwide uh, for all the work he did with animals and stuff of that nature. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But he was very popular. Anyway, Alex Caruso to DeRozan. DeRozan drives and will go to the line. Pascal commits the foul. He's committed a lot of them today, to be fair, Pascal. How many fouls is he on? All right. DeRozan misses the first. Bulls up by 16 at the moment. We've had the good start to the quarter that we needed. All 
All right. DeRozan makes the second. All right, Pascal. To McConnell. Javante Green is there. Good defense. Tries to find the corner. Kobe deflects. That will go to the Pacers. But good defense by Drummond and Javante Green there to force McConnell to a rough pass. It almost led to a steal. There's three seconds left in the shot clock. No open shots here. Miles Turner, defense by Javante Green, and it doesn't matter, he makes the three. That's a tough shot by Miles Turner. Kobe White, trying to dance on Pascal, he gets to the paint, finds Caruso. Kobe White looking to set the screen, Caruso wants to drive, he does, gets to the paint, he scores. 77 to 93 is the score. Shepard. McConnell loses the ball. Finally, he makes a mistake against the Bulls. It's been about three years and he's finally made a mistake. All right. Caruso gets the inbound to Kobe. Kobe needs to hurry up here. Full court pressure here by TJ McConnell. Oh, no one, no one guards Kobe to the rim. An excellent screen there. I think it was a double screen by Caruso and Drummond. Kobe gets completely free at the rim, and he gets the layup to go. It was DeRozan. Never mind. Forget I said anything about Caruso or Drummond. Drummond seals his man, which was perfect. But it was DeRozan's screen. A little bit of a hip check there, to be fair. But still, a screen nonetheless. To get Kobe all the way to the rim. Again, Kobe has struggled today, ladies and gentlemen. But a, a layup like that, you simply can't turn down. And he gets the bucket to go. Steve Irwin must be mad because he tried to uh, help animals and they ended up killing him ungrateful. I mean, look. It's, it's a sad reality sometimes. You know, animals don't know who's helping them, what's going on. And if they feel threatened, they will strike. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there trying to discuss what Steve Irwin did wrong to get stung by Stingray. Uh, but yeah, I can't tell you the full story. I don't necessarily know. But he was definitely very popular. Extremely charismatic. He was one of the most charismatic guys you would ever meet. I never had the luxury to meet him. But just watching any interview, watching anything that he did, anything from TV shows. He was like on... He, he was like... He was like, it was like he was on a coffee run every single day of his life. Every single minute of his life, he was just energized. He was really, he was fun to watch, I'll tell you what. And his family's doing great things as well for animals here as well. I massively respect um, Steve Irwin and his family, without a shadow of a doubt. Bulls better hold on to this lead, fam. We're close. We are close. We are up, what is it, 95 to 77. Is that 18 points, if my math serves me correctly? We've had it. Look, we've had a better start to this quarter. Um, we played better than the Pacers to start this one. So that's exactly what we needed. You know what? I give, I give Billy Donovan a lot of critique sometimes. I think it was a very smart thing to start Javante Green in the fourth quarter. Because... Sometimes Bulls come out to quarters lacking of energy. And Javante Green, if anything, you might say he's a bad player, good player, whatever the case may be. He did turn the ball over when he, when he started this quarter. But the one thing that he will bring is energy. And energy does bring energy to the rest of the team. So I think it was a smart thing by Billy Donovan to start Javante Green in this fourth quarter. Sometimes the things that you love can be what kills you. Man, you should put that quote on a poster or something and sell it. You'd you'd make you'd make a decent buck for that. That was a good quote right there. All 
I think the best Australian TV show of all time is Neighbours. Funnily enough, I don't really watch much TV shows, so I've never watched Neighbours in my life. But, um... I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I, that's a very long-running show. It's feel like that show's been around since I was born. It's kind of what it feels like. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's the best show Australia's got. Holly Valance was on the show and she was super fine. I don't know who that is. Anyway, Pascal got an air one but missed the free throw. 95 and 79 is the score. Io to DeRozan. Javante Green just moving all over the place. DeRozan enters that mid-range, shoots and scores. Alright, Pascal. Back to Pascal. Pascal wants to drive. Almost turns it over. TJ McConnell to Shepard for three. Off. Rebound Andre Drummond. Drummond has his double-double, ladies and gentlemen. Kobe White now has the ball in his hands. Finds Drummond in the post. Naismith guarding. The double has to come. It doesn't. Drummond misses badly. Gets his own miss. And there's a foul called. Number four on Naismith, ladies and gentlemen. All right. DeRozan to Io finds Drummond in the post. Drummond shoots, misses badly. Pascal gets the rebound and wants to run. Drummond, oh, it's Javante, he picks the ball away, but Neesmith opened for three, and he four, it connects, he gets it to go. 82-97, to 97. Javante Green with a pivotal um, strip of the ball on Pascal, but it leads to an open three. Kobe drives all the way to the rim, uses his left hand to score. Halliburton to Pascal. Pascal wants to drive. Almost turns it over again. Neesmith another three. The exact same possession has happened twice now. Pascal drives. Javante Green strips the ball. It finds Neesmith for three. Wide open and he scores. The exact same possession twice. And Pascal is just looking for that foul. All right, DeRozan. 99 to 85. Enters the post. Finds Javante. Javante to Io. Io with Kobe White screening. There's a lot of screens flying everywhere. The pick and roll. Finds Drummond. Drummond gets the layup to go. Okay. Pascal is looking to drive again. He finds Halliburton. The ball gets stripped and Halliburton sent flying. Io, come run with me. Gets the layup. Halliburton wide open for three. Again, half of those Pacers players didn't come back on defense. Gets that open three and misses. The Bulls have a chance to send this game to bed early. They try to trap DeMar and DeMar escapes it. DeRozan goes to the rim and scores over Pascal. High off the glass and in. Bulls back up by 20. We've had a tremendous fourth quarter. Timeout by the Pacers with six minutes and 30 seconds to go. This game could be out of reach by the Pacers. And also, just to keep you guys updated with some games, we know for a fact that Lancers won. But apparently the Clippers have taken a lead against the Philadelphia 76ers. And look, we're probably not going to catch Philly. But... They seem to be the one that could potentially fall out of the three teams. Miami, the Pacers. If we beat the Pacers, they'll all be on the same record, I believe. Except the Pacers will probably lose this game. So it'd be the Heat and the 76ers on the same record. But I still think the 76ers will be the team that falls the most. So any possibility to catch Philly 
We need them to lose that game. Even if it's the smallest of chances. And of course, yes, the Hawks did beat the Portland Trailblazers by uh, 14 points. So there's five seconds left in that game. Philly has... Te uh, no, the Clippers still have the lead. So we'll have to check back in on that in, in about a minute's time just to see who won that game. Kobe White is going to be better than Kobe Bryant. Oof. I don't know about that one, but, you know, you do you. Oh, wow. A big fourth quarter ahead, ladies and gentlemen. A big fourth quarter ahead. We still got a hefty amount of time in this quarter. Still about six minutes and 30 seconds. But oh boy, has it been a fun one to watch. I can't lie to you. This has been one of the better games to watch in general. Like, I can't lie. This is a good game tonight by the Bulls. It has been. It's been a fun game to watch for sure. I hate the Clippers and James Harden with his double gut bonza. I don't know what you're saying. Bonanza? Is that how you say it? Hey, man. Leave James Harden alone, bro. There's no need to be trash talking James Harden in a game like this. Poor guy, bro. It's official, ladies and gentlemen. The Clippers beat the 76ers. You got to feel for Philly in some way. They were up most of that game, it felt like. The Clippers took that late lead. That's a tough break for Philly. Halliburton misses the three. He gets his own miss. He shoots another one. Another offensive rebounds. And the Pacers score. 18 point lead for the Bulls. All right. Kobe White finds Vucevic. Vucevic spins, shoots, and scores with the and one. Love to see it for Vucevic. Just absolutely. It was like an effortless play from Vucevic. Jackson commits that foul. Wow. Vucevic scores. There's six minutes to go, ladies and gentlemen. Bulls up by 21. Halliburton probably has to start making a difference here. Tries to shoot the mid-range. Jackson gets the offensive rebound. Neesmith for three. Falls out. Rebound Kobe White. Io wants to take it in transition. Gets absolutely swatted by Jackson. He soared for that block and he gets it. All right. Kobe White drives to the rim. Scores again. Kobe's having a big fourth quarter. I was thinking, Aiden, you kind of look like Carlos Buza. Never heard that in my life. Uh, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. But if that was a compliment, thanks. If that wasn't a compliment, uh, well, I guess. Move on to the next one. Good player for the Bulls, Carlos Boozer, so I'll take it as a compliment. Why not? Another timeout here for the Pacers. Again, they don't have much time left to really make a difference here. So these timeouts might mean, you know, the last push for that Indiana Pacers team. 
One last push for them. All right. Um, this game is definitely big one approved. We've got Bulls mascots trying to get the security guards to, you know, take the bait. Fair play. Uh, when is the Pacers going to wave the white flag? We don't know. All right. Um, it's a compliment. Thank you very much. I'll take the compliment. Carlos Boozer was the beast. The score. I don't know if the score is glitched or not. It is glitched. All right, let's... Why does ESPN do this, man? All right, let's go find another one. Um... All right, the Pacers have waved the white flag, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like everyone I find, the score's just not working. So, I'm assuming in a couple of minutes, maybe even a couple of seconds, the Bulls will do the same and put their bench on. The Pacers have given up. Hey, it feels good to have a game like this, especially against a good team. Kind of just handle business, you know what I mean? Every single one is um, the same. I'm sorry, I can't change it. The American one's the same. All the other countries, they're all the same. The ESPN is just sleeping at the moment. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to just keep on telling you the score until they change it. So, um, Carlos Boozer was a beast with Joe Kim Noah, but Boozer played very well with the Utah Jazz, better than the Bulls. Yeah, yeah, I know he was a good player, but he said I look like him. Yeah, that's the difference in saying he's a good player. But I will take it as a compliment, so I appreciate that. It's 110 to 89. Right now, it's 113 to 89. Um, that's the score at the moment. I'll have to keep on checking, but right now, everyone I've found is all, it's all the same score. They, you know, ESPN has taken the night off. They decided to bow out early. All right, let's try again while there's a foul call. Still the same. Literally every single one is the same. Ah, uh, DeRozan. Nice spin. Gets blocked by Jackson again. This one has one. <laughs> They're all delayed, bro. What's going on? Is East Ben getting hacked by Lizard Squad or something? What's going on? Vucevic to Devontae Green to Io for three. Io misses. Rebound Kobe White. Kobe White slams it down on TJ McConnell's head. He deserves that, TJ McConnell. 115 to 89 is the score. Oh, he deserves it. All the times he's cooked us. It's about time he gets posted. Vucevic tries to get the rebound. They get the layup to go. That's Jackson again. Timeout balls. I'm assuming this is to take our players out, ladies and gentlemen. The game is dead and buried. It's over. Now he just gets to enjoy the ride. There was on, oh, it was Doug McDermott. I thought it was going to be TJ McConnell. It was Doug McDermott.
Well, look, former Bulls player, I'll still take it. You know, Kobe White posterizing someone is a rare sight, to say the least. But it would have been nice to have it on, on, on McConnell, bro. It would have been fantastic. Ah, oh, man. What do you guys think? A game like this, I think it was well needed. We needed a game like this. Three game losing streaks, they suck. It's a lot of losing. It feels good to kind of get a win like this, you know what I mean? And the Pacers. The Pacers have played very well recently. Again, since the last time we played them, they've got a good couple of wins there to get to the sixth seed. And tying the season series against them, I'll take it. Kobe White's still in the game. Kobe, Vooch are still in the game. Dale and Terry, Tavusevic, Toy Craig's in the game. We're not giving up, bro. We want to play our starters all we can. Vucevic misses the shot. That's crazy. Why are the Bulls players still in the game? All right. Uh, the Pacers with the slam. 117 to 93 is the score. Dale and Terry... He wants to try and make something happen. Finds Javante Green. Javante Green. The jump hook airballs badly. And Jackson with the put back. It's this this little energy run from the Pacers at the moment. They, they, their bench is completely out there. But they're providing energy. Kobe White for three. He gets it to go. 120 to 95 is the score. And it looks like there's another timeout. Or a foul. It's a foul, I think. And now the now the starters are coming out. But Tim is coming in. Terry Taylor coming into the game as well. Vucevic gets his rest. I guess that was just to confirm the Bulls' victory, I guess. I mean, there was no chance they were going to come back anyway, but... I guess it is what it is. Our complete bench is out there. Kobe should have fouled the heck out of Pascal. The Clippers won. Yes, they did, Jimmy. Uh, Pace has played well all season. They have indeed. Billy Donovan is being Tibbs again. Yeah, there was no need to put those starters back out there. Thankfully, nothing happened. But Tim makes the three. Nice to see Patim back out there. Jackson now, he's still try-harding against the Bulls here. He's trying to get any put back, any slam dunk, anything to go. I think Patim is the one that commits the foul. There's about a minute and 24 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. The Bulls are going to get the win. Let's be honest. We're up by 30 at this point. No chance for the Pacers to come back from this. All right. The second free throw has been missed by the Pacers. And Javante Green secures the rebound. Toy Craig to Terry Taylor. Finds Dale and Terry. Dale and Terry, nice little fake. Finds Batim. Batim to Toy Craig who cuts down the lane and scores. The ball movement is still here for the Bulls. Batim finds the open man. Dale and Terry with the block. We're still seeing highlight plays from this Bulls team. Toy Craig. Finds Dale and Terry. Dale and Terry with the shrug and the slam. Is it a travel? They called a travel. DT smiling about it. Ah, look. Just give him the play, man. Come on. Why do you call so many travels, man? It's crazy. 
47 seconds left. All right, and that's a turnover. No, it's not. It's going to stay Pacers ball. Here we go again. Doug McDermott off the screen. Misses the three. Dale and Terry secures the rebound. A big rebound for Dale and Terry. And it looks like the Bulls are going to dribble out the shot clock. What just happened there? No way. Did we just get an eight second violate? I'm convinced he was past the line. These refs are bugging to end this game. Doug McDermott, another three. This one falls. Another three off a screen. And that is going to be game, ladies and gentlemen. And that is going to be stream as well. We are going to end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, once again, feel free to like the stream and subscribe if you are new. We will quickly check the like goal to see if we reached the double digit likes. We did not. Oh no. We are on seven likes at the moment. Uh, so, you know, if you guys are still watching, about 14 of you still here. If you haven't done so already, we just need three more. That'd be highly appreciated. But either way, I will see you in the game reaction a little bit later on today. Have a wonderful and safe day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. God bless. Take care. And peace.